isn't it? Isn't it a glorious morning? Oh, I just love mornings like this. Birds sing, flowers grow, all's right with the Benson. What are you cooking? What does it look like I'm cooking? Well, <laughs> it looks like eggs. Good, then it's eggs. <laughs> The doctor said no eggs. Mr. Tate's cholesterol level is quite high. Eggs could kill him. Hmm. Therefore, we don't want to cook eggs, do we? We do. <laughs> Benson, 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 what am I going to do with you? Such a mind of your own. Well, I suppose just this morning it won't hurt. A In fact, let's make something really special for the whole... Let's make eggs, Benedict. Eggs, Benedict? Get out of here. <laughs> we'll surprise everyone. I'll help. Oh, for the dinner party tonight, I think I'd like for you to make beef wellington. Forget it. Why? I don't like it. <laughs> but it's very good. It's Mr. Tate's favorite. It ain't mine. I don't like it, so I ain't making it. I'm making fish. Mr. Tate hates fish. I know. <laughs> Well, then why are you making it? Because I like fish more than I like Mr. Tate. Good morning, Benson. No, thank you. Uh, just coffee, Benson. Uh, dear, it's Eggs Benedict. <laughs> Jessica, do you know the cholesterol count of that? You might just as well get a gun and put it to my head. Now you're talking. <laughs> Benson. Did you put sugar in this? Is it sweet? Very. Then I guess I did. Benson, how many times do I have to tell you I am a diabetic? I can't have sugar. <laughs> oh, I keep thinking it's salt you can't have. I can't have salt either. Ain't no salt in there. Just get me another cup, please, and this time don't put anything in it. Okay, Babette, you're out on bail, Mr. Tate. Your lawyer's here. Oh. Benson? Oh. Well, Benson, you're not a lawyer. Shh. They wouldn't let me in to see you, so I told them I was your lawyer. You didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm with the firm of Honeycutt, Pringle, Kaplan, and Black. I'm Black. black. <laughs> Well, you look like a lawyer. Actually, you look very nice as a lawyer. I, I'll bet you could be one. I smell bacon. That's because I brought breakfast. Oh, Benson, look at this. Blueberry muffins and Canadian bacon. <gasps> Grapefruit. Oh. Well, I know you couldn't eat the food in here. Mm. What do you want for dinner? Oh, you know what I would love for dinner? What? Meatballs and spaghetti. Well, that's a problem, see, because the sauce will run in the case. Oh, right. And then you couldn't explain that. Yeah, especially to Mr. Tate. The briefcase is his. Oh. <laughs> Morning, darling. Oh, hello, dear. What's this? Yeah. What are you doing here? Well, I... He's uh, my uh, lawyer, Chester. Yes, uh, Honeycutt, Pringle, Kaplan, and Black. He's Black. <laughs> well, I guess you won't be needing me. Uh, no, 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 no. He's not a lawyer. He's a butler. Benson, why are you posing as a lawyer? Because I couldn't get in to see her as a butler. <laughs> huh? Carry on, counselor. So I remember that night very well. I ate chili and had gas. I couldn't get to sleep, so I stayed up and watched all the late movies. Then, at the crack of dawn, I heard Mr. Tate trip over the extension cord that I forgot to fix. And his cursing kept me up the whole rest of the night. So I know Mrs. Tate never went up. My God. Goodness, we have the incredible Kreskin here. We do? Where? It's amazing recall, Mr. Benson. Absolutely amazing retention of detail. Thank you. Tell me, uh, is this some sort of voodoo way of knowing that you people have, or what? I object. I do, too. All right. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Benson, keeping your eyes on me now. If you would please demonstrate some more of this amazing talent. What color tie is the foreman wearing? Green with red stripes. And the woman seated directly behind him, what is she wearing? 
yellow blouse with a blue scarf. And the man seated next to her? <laughs> Three-piece blue suit with a blue shirt and a blue tie that clashes. And, <laughs> and then the, the other guy... All right, all right, all right. <laughs> You have a wonderful memory, but that doesn't prove that Mrs. Tate didn't tiptoe out and you didn't hear her. You may step down. What? Aha! Uh -huh. I said you may step down, but you didn't hear me. Wonderful memory, rotten hearing. I call Mr. Chester Tate to the stand. No further questions? I have no questions. You may step down. The man mumbled, I hear great. <laughs> You swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you, God? Of course I do, Tinkler. Benson, that was terrific. How did you remember what the jury was wearing? I could see the reflection in the window. <laughs> well, I've said goodbye to everyone but you. Mm. What are you doing? Oh, well, I'm practicing. I've had to do this ever since you've been gone. Here. Here, Benson. Taste. Oh, no, 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 Miss Tate. I'm, I know I'm full. I, I had that. Come on. That's awful. <laughs> well, that's what the family's going to have to eat. You're not making this any easier, you know. Uh, Benson, please, sit down. Come on, sit down right here. I've got a surprise for you. What? A goodbye cake. <laughs> Did you make it? Well, of course. Do I have to eat it? <laughs> You're my best friend, Benson. And why are you trying to poison me? <laughs> You're my best friend, too, Mrs. Tate. That doesn't have to stop, huh? No. Well? Different. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't take that job at the governor's mansion because I'm unhappy here. Oh, Benson, I know that. I mean, my goodness, running the governor's mansion is a wonderful opportunity for you. And they need you. I mean, this side of the family has a minor snafu once in a while. But they have problems. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you understand. That always was the screwy side of the family, the Gatlins. <laughs> very screwy and very rich. You know my great-great-great-grandfather? He made a killing in haberdashery. He, he invented those tall hats that the pilgrims wore. Come. Don't do that, Mrs. Tate. No, I won't. Because if you do, I will. Oh, gosh, you mustn't. I'm not. <laughs> well, me neither. Oh, Ben. woman out there. She's after me. Tall blonde. That's Gretchen Krause, the head housekeeper. I didn't stop to get her name. You! Who? 
You are leaving muddy tracks all over the place. Well, that's because I got muddy feet. I want your shoes. They'll be too small. You are tracking up the governor's mansion and it is disgusting. Fine, and I'll walk on my hands. <laughs> Katie? Oh, Dad, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Can you ever forgive me, please? I'm so sorry. What did she break? <laughs> no, I've been so mean to you. And you went and saved the beavers. I didn't save the beavers. Benson saved the beavers. No, he did. He's just modest. No, he did. It was his plan. Well, we both did. And I love you both. You have homework. I did it. You need some fixing. <laughs> you finish it up, and then I'll come tuck you in. Good night, Benson. Good night, sweetheart. Thank you, Benson. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Benson, I've always been a late starter in things. I married late. I was 37 before I married my late wife. Uh, I had a child late. I was 40 when Katie was born. Boy, even my mother used to say I always did everything late. I crawled late. I walked late, talked late. When I was about three and a half, she asked me in utter exasperation if I ever intended to use the toilet. And I said, later. <laughs> But, uh, see, now I'm the governor. I can't afford to be a late starter here for the people. I don't even know if I can handle it. But uh, if you'd stay with us, Benson, at least I'd know my home was OK. Would you stay with us, Benson? Well, I'll give it a try. We'll see what happens. Uh, Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, I owe you a lot, Benson. The beavers owe me more. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Oh, Benson, this is a mansion. Yeah, that's why they don't call it the governor's hut. <laughs> Look, I'll go get the rest of your luggage as soon as I get some feeling back in my arms. <laughs> What's with all this luggage anyway? You're only staying overnight. Well, it's for the banquet tonight. Well, by the time you unpack, it'll be over. <laughs> well, I just couldn't decide what to bring. So you brought everything? Yes. Jessica! Oh, Jean. Oh. <laughs> you look just the same. How long has it been? And you look just the same, too. <laughs> Only better. So good, in fact, I wouldn't have recognized you if you didn't look just the same. <laughs> <laughs> You know, even if you didn't look just the same, I would have assumed it is you, because, I mean, you are here, and you did know who I was. I'm glad we solved that. Well, let's go. Benson, now you know that it's hard enough for me to say goodbye to you at all, but, I mean, to say goodbye to you in an airport is absolutely impossible. I mean, we'd hug and I'd cry and my mascara would run, and I'd think of a thousand things to say. I'll probably miss the plane, then we'll have to say goodbye all over again. <laughs> Mrs. Tate. You know, we've been through a lot together. Mm-hmm. But I think this just about tops it. <laughs> I certainly hope so. You know, you are the most remarkable man I ever met. Oh, come on. No, I mean, there is nothing you can't do. Well, there is one thing I can't do. What's that? Stop missing you. Goodbye, Benton. Goodbye, Jessica. Give the woman some air, for God's sake. Benson! You're still around. <laughs> You're back. Hello, Benson. 
May I have a few minutes along with Benson? Oh. So you got here? Of course I got here. I'm glad. Because, you see, I really missed you. And if I had died and I hadn't seen you, then it would be really a long time before I would see you. But now this way, since you got here and I've seen you, it won't be such a long time till I see you. I guess it never leaves you. I still understand you when you talk. I missed you. I've missed you, too. You were my best friend, Benson. And you are the best person that's ever been in my life. Really? In spite of all the trouble I caused you? <laughs> what trouble? <laughs> well, you know, the way I, I used to mess things up and, and I got in jams. And you were always there to get me out. I wish I could get you out of this one. I'm afraid you can't this time, Vincent. You know, I keep thinking that I should say something important. I mean, after all, this is my deathbed. <laughs> But I don't have anything important to say. You don't have to. Your whole life's been important. It's been a nice life. I know. I hate to leave it. Benson, would you look in on them from time to time? Don't worry about a thing. Benson, you be happy. Be happy. You be happy because that's all there really is. No, Jessica. Poor Jessica. Why, poor Jessica? <laughs> oh, Benson, I've never been poor in my life. <laughs> what? Jessica? What are you doing here? We were just talking about you. Where'd you come from? Oh, you won't believe where I came from. <laughs> First of all, you see, I was kidnapped by revolutionaries and taken to South America. And then I went to Connecticut, and then I was kidnapped again and taken to South America. <laughs> then I went to heaven, then I came here. Whoa, 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 whoa. When you say heaven, do you mean heaven or some little town in Georgia? <laughs> Oh, heaven, you know, the real thing. God, angels, the whole ball of wax. Oh, Benson, you should see heaven. It's really a lovely place. Jessica, you haven't changed a bit. Well, congratulate me. I did my good deed. Congratulations. Well, it seems like things worked out for the best for both of us. What was your good deed? Amazingly enough, something very small. You see, I was in a park, and I helped this little kitten out of a tree. <laughs> hey, you, you know, you know, that's the first time I've laughed in weeks. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Well. What are friends for? Hmm? Oh, I've got to fly. Fly? Yes. This is goodbye, Benson. 
Already? Mm. Seems you just got here. I still don't understand any of this. You know, you're being here, you're not being here. I don't understand it myself. But I did learn one thing. I am positively not dead. I'm in a coma somewhere in South America. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, I'll get out of it all right. I always knew you'd find a loophole. I've missed you, Benson. I wish we didn't have to say goodbye. Will I ever see you again? Oh, sure. It's a small cosmos. We'll have lunch. Then let us not say goodbye. Okay. I love you. And I love you. <laughs>